2008 cycles, they got complete power in Albany, and boy, did it become a culture of corruption quickly. We have an unelected controller because of uh, financial corruption, Hevesy had to leave. We have an unelected governor because of moral corruption, Spitzer had to leave. And that unelected governor, together with uh, Schumer, uh, appointed an unelected senator, Gillibrand, who voted for, one well, was the only one of seven senators to vote for ACORN, federal funds for ACORN, uh, a known corrupt organization because she's unsure of her political position. And now this convention is perpetuating that culture of corruption by the people they're select selecting. This is the party, the Democratic Party so-called New Democratic Party is the party of the backroom bosses who are making sure that their hand-picked minions uh, uh, continue in office. You have uh, Silver making sure there's no opposition to controller the Napoli. You have uh, Schumer making sure that there's no opposition to uh, unelected Gillibrand. And of course Schumer himself, uh, he's not looking at representing the people of New York State. He's looking at, at, at being the next majority leader in the Senate after Harry Reid loses in Nevada. Uh, is this the new Democratic Party? No. It's the old party of backroom bosses and corruption, which the Democratic Party has been for too long. And it's fostered the culture of corruption in Albany. Uh, we need to have, uh, our convention is going to be a, a, a convention that's open. Anyone can come and compete. We have people, multiple candidates competing for every office except for a controller. We've got a terrific candidate and uh, and uh, the committee men and committee women next week of the Republican Party are going to decide who goes forward into the primaries and then the then the grassroots of the Republican Party will decide who's going to be our nominees to go forward to to defeat the Democrats in November and so we're, we're for the two seats? absolutely we're going to your side I mean we're going to we're going to have primary primaries across the board and that's good that's what it, this is this is the year when people want uh, parties that are open where the people make the selection not the backroom bosses but in the for the Gillibrand and the Schumer seats you expect to have those candidates uh, compete in primaries for Abs instance absolutely. like Dio Guardia and Dio Guardia Blakeman and uh, and Malcolm, 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 Malcolm. exactly. Yes, they will. They will be. Uh, I don't look. The committee men and women yeah. in open convention will decide who goes forward in the primary. Maybe two. It may be three, mm -hmm. but they will be the ones who decide. They'll be the same with the race against Schumer. They'll be the same with the race of the governor. They'll be the same with the attorney general's race. They're very Are you confident. In, uh, Duffy on the LG candidate. I, uh, I, I, he just got named, and I don't know that much about him. Mm -hmm. I do know he's an upstate mayor, uh, and I can see why, uh, why, why he. He was selected for that geographic uh, purpose, but beyond that, I don't know anything about him. Do you feel confident uh, that you can get the Republican wave? They're very confident in there. They, you know, they can take the states. They think they have a wave. Well, <laughs> this is uh, this year. It's a. It is a. It is a wave that is in which the Republicans can compete very well. Is the right way to put it. This is a wave where the people of New York State want fiscal conservatism. Look. New York families, have, uh, they have seen their 401ks shrink, the value of their homes have crashed, they have lost their savings as a result, they're looking at 17% under or unemployment, and, uh, and they are saying, well, what is my job next? In this context, they are saving uh, more, they are spending less, and they are paying down their debts. And now they're looking at government deficits, a potential $25 billion deficit that the next elected governor is going to have to face here in New York State, and $1.5 trillion deficit in, in Washington. And they know that the Democrats are just going to tax their way out of that and aren't going to tax them more. Why can't the Democrats, when they're in office, uh, uh, cut their spending rather than putting the burden back on the hard-pressed families of New York who are worried about their jobs? Republicans, part of our DNA is cutting spending and cutting taxes. That's what we do. And that's why the people of New York are going to vote for our candidates. Thank you so much, Chairman. Chairman, how do you feel about um, Chairman Jay Jacobs' decision to essentially let all five can, uh, AG candidates on the ballot? Well, I, I think he wants to try and demonstrate that he's got no advantage. But you bet that Andrew Cuomo, behind the scenes, is fighting uh, like any other backroom boss to make sure that his hand selected candidate. Kathleen Rice is going to get the nomination because he doesn't want to have her investigating him when he thinks he's going to be governor. Uh, you know, that's not the way it should be. It should be an open convention where the delegates decide like we're going to have at our convention next week.
looking at the next con next week's convention, obviously uh, the conservatives moved up their convention. Have you talked to Mike Long at all? Have you had any discussions with them? I mean, obviously that had to be frustrating for you that they're going to probably nominate Rick Lazio a few days before, and because no Republicans won without a conservative, you know, line in 30 plus years in the statewide office. Well, uh, I'm not sure of that. Uh, I have had discussions with Mike Long about candidates. We've had these over a long period of time, uh, and I'm not sure that that's the way it's going to come out. I know there are a number of major counties there that are looking to nominate someone other than Mr. Lazio. So that's a fight that's going on within the Conservative Party. It's a fight that they had back at the, as those of you who covered uh, their endorsement, unusual endorsement, where it was a huge bloodletting and they broke off in two separate press conferences. I mean, that is, uh, that's a problem that, that Chairman Long's going to have to deal with at his, uh, his convention. And you've, um, you know, been out there for Steve Levy, obviously, it's a good, the gubernatorial candidate. Are there any other candidates that you're going to be supporting no, the I, 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 no, I endorse uh, Steve Levy because uh, while we have two great candidates, I think uh, Rick Lazio would be a great candidate, make a great governor, uh, but I think Steve Levy, because of his record of being a real fiscal conservative in Suffolk County over the last six years, the fact that he was cross-endorsed by the Republican Party and the Conservative Party, won with 96% of the vote, and he understands what, uh, because of what he did in Suffolk County, what needs to be done in Albany, that record that makes him uh, the better candidate. That's why I endorsed him. But I'm letting the delegates decide. I've not been out there pushing the the, uh, the committee men or the committee woman one way or the other. They're going to make it their decision. I've let them know what my opinion is, but that's all I've done with it.